So the second thing we want to see in this chapter is the idea of a distributed force. And um, we consider friction to be a distributed force because there's not a single point of application. So there's two problems with friction. The first, uh, we've discussed this before, um, energy is dissipated by friction. It's dissipated into both of the, the surfaces. So if we consider this box uh, sliding over the surface, um, energy is dissipated both into this surface and into the other surface. Okay, that's the one problem. Another problem is that there's no single point of application. You know, if I stood here and I pulled you with a rope, you'd have a single point of application. But when it comes to friction, uh, we have a distributed surface. So there's no single point of application. So this makes dealing with friction a bit tricky. <clears throat> okay, so now let's see how we can actually deal with friction a little bit more. So we know that um, when we deal with friction, the, we consider both of those surfaces inside our system so that any energy that's dissipated is dissipated into the system so that um, we do not consider any external forces that do work. Okay. So let's consider this idea over here where you have a box that has an initial velocity, initial kinetic energy, and friction is causing it to slow down and come to a halt. Okay? So we know that uh, using our energy diagrams, we know there's no work done. Okay? But all the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy, is converted into thermal energy. So the, the kinetic energy drops down to zero, so there's a negative uh, change of kinetic energy and then there's a positive change of thermal energy okay so this is what we have here delta E is equal to that nothing new there okay all right now the qu another question is how are these energy changes how is this delta E thermal that related to this displacement that's another thing that we can look at and so we know from 9.14, well, first of all, let's consider the force of friction, okay, to be a force exerted by the surface on the block. And we consider that, we call that FSB, the, the force of friction of, of the surface on the block, okay? Now, according to 9.14, the translational kinetic energy change is equal to um, the external force exerted on the block times the displacement of its center of mass. Okay? So this displacement of the center of mass is obviously this is what we're talking about. Okay? Um, a couple of things to take note here and you'll see where we're going with this. Uh, the friction force is always opposing the direction of displacement, so this value is always going to be negative. Okay? That's the first thing, is that this is a negative value. The second is because this block is rigid, all of its, the system kinetic energy, oh sorry, yes, that's right. The translational kinetic energy is all of the kinetic energy of the system. Okay? So now, um, we know that our thermal energy, change in thermal energy, is the negative of our change in kinetic energy. We know that our change in kinetic energy is equal to this. Okay? So, our change in thermal energy is the negative of this. Right? So, if the point is this. If we are trying to uh, relate this delta, this uh, displacement to our change in thermal energy, we can relate it via this friction force um, that is being applied to the block. But there are a couple of things that we need to take note of. Okay. The first is energy is dissipated on both sides. So even though the right hand side, even though this looks like work, force times displacement, it is not correct to refer to this as work done by the friction force. Okay? 
It's because energy is transferred to both sides. Okay? Another thing is that because um, this, this uh, dissipation of energy, this increase of the thermal energy, is dependent on every single segment that, that it travels. Okay? So if you go in one direction and then you reverse and go in the other direction, the total thermal energy increase is a function of the entire path. That's why this eventually looks like this. Okay? So if the sum of the distance traveled over all the one-way segments is d path, the change in thermal energy becomes delta E thermal is the friction force on the block times the entire path that this object moves. Okay? So we'll do an example in the next one and we'll see how we apply this.